Ryan from Agour Math Circle. And today I'll be explaining the Math Kangaroo 2019 grades 1 through 2 answer. So problem number 1 is which cloud contains only numbers less than 7? So cloud A we have 6, 1, 8, and 7. Cloud B contains 5, 2, 3, and 9. Cloud C contains 6, 2, 4, and 7. Cloud D contains 1, 3, 2, and 5. And Cloud E contains 10, 8, 9, and 7. So the way we solve this is we should first write down all the numbers from 1 to 10. And it only says numbers less than 7, <coughs> which would include only this series of numbers. Therefore, we could eliminate any numbers or any cloud that contained these few numbers, which would eliminate A, B, C, and E, leaving us with the answer of D. Go. Oh. So this is problem number two, which states, which figure shows this part of the necklace? So in order to do this, <coughs> we must first look at each part of the necklace or each uh, an possible answer. And this one's G, W, B, W, B, W, W, B, G, G, B, G, and B, W, B. So you can look through the diagram and check for each of these. So for example, this portion shown does not exist anywhere in this necklace. This portion shown doesn't exist in any part either. Neither does D and neither does E, which gives us the answer of C, which is right over here. Cool. So now we have problem number three, which states, together mom kangaroo and her son jumper weigh 60 kilograms. Mom kangaroo alone weighs 52 kilograms. How much does jumper weigh? So to solve this, we could start off with a diagram. Let's say this entire portion represents their total weight, which is 60 kilograms. Now this portion represents mom kangaroo's weight, which is 52 kilograms. So what we're trying to solve is this extra portion at the end, which means <clears throat> in order to solve this, it would, the equation would be 60 kilograms in total minus mom kangaroo's weight, which is 52 kilograms, equals to jumper's weight. And you'd end up with the answer of eight, which is number C. Just say go. Go. Okay, so this is problem number four, which states Karen cuts one piece out of this grid. Which piece is the one she cut out? So we have this grid here, and in order to solve this, um, we have to do what we did with number two. So we have to match or try and match each part, each of these parts to one part in the grid. So if you could try and find a part with the triangle on the left and a square on the right, you can't find that anywhere in this grid, which means you would eliminate this possibility. And using this tactic, it would help you eliminate B, C, and D, and give you the answer of E, which is located right here. Oh. So now we have problem number five, which states, at the entrance of the zoo, there are 12 children in line. Lucy is the seventh from the front, and Sam is the second from the back. How many children are there between Lucy and Sam in the line? So in this problem, you already have a diagram provided for you. So the first thing you would do is you, is you should label all the different numbers of the people in the line in order to help you determine where Lucy and Sam are in the line. So Lucy is the seventh from the front, which means that this is Lucy, and Sam is second from the back, so he would be number 11. So now all you have to do is just count the number of children between them, which is one, two, three. So your answer would be B. Go. Oh. In problem number six, it says, Jorge pairs his socks so that the numbers match. How many pairs can he make? So in the actual diagram, there are many socks that are all arranged in many different angles to confuse you. But what we're trying to focus on here are the numbers. So I recommend you first write down all the numbers in the socks in one line. And then from there, you can begin to pair them up. So by doing this, you could just check each number to see if there's anything that matches with it in the line. And then just cross that out and make a tally mark. So this is one pair. 
Five does not have a pair. Oh, five does have a pair. So that's two pairs. Three has a pair. <clears throat> two has a pair. And then we have seven with a pair. However, eight and six do not have pairs. Therefore, using our tally marks, we can determine that there are five possible pairs that Jorge can make. So this is problem number seven, which states, Maya the bee was collecting pollen from all the flowers that are inside the rectangle, but outside the triangle. From how many flowers did she collect pollen? So, we first want to focus on the parts that matter. So it's inside the rectangle. So that's why I'm referring to this rectangle but outside of the triangle. So that's referring to this region. Therefore, all you really have to focus on are these two regions, which end up having a total of nine flowers in the diagram. Go. So now I have problem number eight, which has two apples that, say, that are saying, together we cost six cents. Two pairs, which are saying, together we cost eight cents, and an apple and a pear that are saying, how much do we cost together? So in order to solve this, we need to use some information. So we can assume that these two apples both cost the same. Therefore, six, which is the total value of the two apples, divided by the amount of apples, which is two, equals to three, which means each apple costs three cents. Now we can do the same thing with the pairs. These two pairs total value is eight cents divided by the number of pairs, which is two equals to four cents per pair. So using this information, we used four cents per pair plus the three cents per an apple equals to seven cents, which gives us the answer of C. So now we have problem number nine, which states, you have to close two of the five gates so that the mouse cannot reach the cheese. Which gate should you close? So first we'll just eliminate all the options that won't work. If we eliminate or close gate one, then the mouse can still go out through here. So gate one is not needed to be closed. Let's eliminate option A. If you close gate two, the same thing happens. The mouse can still go out through here. And if you close gate 3, the it's impossible for the mouse to even get out because it's just a dead end. Therefore, it leaves us with the options of gates 4 and 5, which is the answer of E. Oh. So problem number 10 hat states, Patricia folds a sheet of paper twice and then cuts it, as shown. How many pieces of paper does she end up with? So she folds it twice. So after she folds her paper twice, these two sides are folds, and th these two sides are open edges. Therefore, if she were to cut this piece off, these two edges would fall off and create two pieces, while this one, while this top part would create just one big piece, making the answer three. Oh yeah. Okay, so now we have problem number 11, which states five square cards are stacked on a table as shown. The cards are removed one by one from the top of the stack. In what order are the cards removed? So based on this diagram, we can tell that the first card removed will be five because five is already a full square, which leaves us with the options of A, B, and D. Now we know that the next one must be two, because if it were three, there would be this extra white space over here. So that gives us the options of A and B. Now, we have the options of either the order of one or four, or four or one. Now, the reason why the answer is one and then four is because this, this situation is the same as the situation with five and two. One is already seemingly the, the width of a full square, therefore one would be on top of four. So your answer is A.
So now we have problem number 12, which states, a cat and a bowl of milk are in opposite corners of the board. The cat can only move as shown by the arrows, either down or to the right. In how many ways can the cat reach the milk? So pretty much the only way to solve this is actually by marking out all the different possibilities. So you have to remember that the only directions we're allowed to go to are to the right and down. So that gives us this possibility. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Which gives us the answer of E, which is six total possibilities. So now we have number 13, which states, four strips are woven into a pattern as shown. What do you see when you look at it from the other side? So, the way we can first eliminate some of the possible solutions is in this diagram, we see that the bottom white strip, which is this one, is completely overlapped by these two red strips, which means if we flip it over, flip it over, then that means that the bottom white strip will completely overlap the two red strips, which gives us the options of B and E. Now, as we see in the diagram, one of the red strips is overlapped by a white strip. In this one, not, in this one, the top white strip, it doesn't overlap anything, which doesn't match up to the diagram. Therefore, the answer must be B. So this is problem number 14, which states, each of the shapes shown is made by gluing together four cubes of the same size. The shapes will be painted. Which shape has the smallest area, area to be painted? So here's an example. We have four Lego blocks. So for letter A, we're going to try and multiply. There's really no easy way out of this except just to count the surface area. So in this case, there's four on this side, and there's a total of these four, and there's a total of four sides, so it would be 16 so far. And then we can't forget these two on the end, which makes this one 18. Next up, we have letter B, which looks something like this and has surface area of 4, 4, which adds up to 8, plus 2, which is 10, plus 2, which is 12, and then 13, 14, 15, 16. So this one has surface area of 16. Next up for letter C, we have this surface area. There's 4 on, this, on the top, 4 on the bottom, so that's 8 already. Then on the sides we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, yeah, no, not 10. So that'd be about 17 or 18, which means that, C, which means that so far A and C are not possible because they are both greater than 16. So for now, 16 is the smallest area, but we still need to find these two. So now we have for D, the, t the top area is four, the bottom area is four, so that's already eight. And then the side areas are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's 10 plus eight, which is 18. So D is also not an option. Then we have E. <laughs> The top area, or we have this, which is 1, 2, 3 on the top, and then 4, 5, 6 on the bottom, so that's 6 so far. And then these two on the sides, which is 1, which is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So this is 18. Therefore, the answer will be B because B has the smallest area amongst all of the other blocks. Okay, so now number 15 states, a floor is covered with identical rectangular tiles as shown. The shorter side of each tile is one meter. What is the length of the side with the question mark? 
So the way we saw this is they gave us a hint in this one which shows that the long side of the rectangle is equivalent to four short sides of the rectangle. And one short side of the, rect of the rectangle is equivalent to one meter. So doing this, we can assume this value is one. This value is four because we have four, because one long side equals to four short sides, which is four meters. Same thing with this one. One long side is four short sides. This is one meter, and then this is two meters, and then in the end, we just add up all these values. So, we can get a value of 12, which is E. Problem number 16 states, a train from Kang Station to Aru Station leaves at 6 o'clock in the morning and passes by three other stations without stopping. The numbers show the travel times between the two stations in hours. The train arrives at Aru Station at 11 o'clock at night on the same day. What is the travel time between Aru Station and the previous station? So in order to solve this, we first need to figure out how many hours pass by between 6 a.m. in the morning to 11 p.m. at night. So in order to better visualize this, just write down the different times between the hours. And then just count the amount of times between hours you've written. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So it's a total of 17 hours. Now, now, we, now all we have to do is just is add up these values and subtract them from 17 hours. So these values all add up to 12. Therefore, 17 minus 12 makes 5 hours which gives you the answer of D. So now we have problem number 17, which states, On a farm there are only sheep and cows. The number of sheep is eight more than the number of cows. The number of cows is half the number of sheep. How many animals are on the farm? Now with this kind of typical problem, you would probably want to draw a diagram. So in this case, let's say that this part represented the sheep. So the sheep has eight more than the number of cows, and cows. The number of cows is half the number of sheep. Therefore, this would be the no, this, these would be the cows, and then this difference would be eight because the sheep has eight more than the cows. Therefore, with this being halfway, the sheep's total would be sixteen, and the cows' total would be eight. Adding up sixteen and eight, you would get twenty-four, which is. Deep. Number 18 states, a figure has been cut into these three pieces. Which figure could have been cut? Now, the only way to do this is to just try and fit these pieces into some of them, into the different diagrams. So, you could use common sense or reasoning to assume that some of these would not work. For example, with, let, with option number B wouldn't work because um, you couldn't have just a, just um, couldn't just have this semi or half a heart just in the middle cause, because then the other pieces wouldn't fit in along with it. Therefore, if you do this with all, the, all of the different options, you end up with the option of A. And just to demonstrate how these different parts go into it, this is the half heart, this is the semicircle, and then this is the triangle. Oh. Number 19 states that there are 10 camels in a zoo. The camels that are either Bactrian with two humps or Dromedary with one hump. Or, yeah, those are two types. In total, there are 14 humps. Find the number of Bactrian camels in the zoo. So first of all, we want to draw our 10 camels. So 
Let's assume these are the 10 camels. Now each camel can have at least one hump. If we assume that all of these camels only had one hump, then we would have 10 humps in total. However, in order to reach 14 humps, the maximum of humps that a camel can have is two, which would mean that four of these camels have one extra hump, which means that four of the camels have two humps and six have one hump. And in order to confirm this, you can do two times four, two humps times four camels, plus one hump times six camels equals to 14, which confirms that theory. Therefore, the answer <coughs> must be D. So, number 20 states, three squirrels, Annie, Asia, and Ellie, collected seven nuts in total. Each collected a different amount of nuts, but collected at least one nut. Annie collected the least, and Asia the most. So how many nuts did Ellie collect? So in order to solve this, we could first try and find the amount that Annie obtained. So if Annie obtained two, then that means Ellie must have obtained four, and Asia, no, Ellie has three, and then Asia has four. That's impossible, because when you add this up, it equals nine, and they only collected seven nuts in total. Therefore, it cannot. The minimum cannot be two. The minimum is one. Now, the, now Ellie can't have collected three because if it was one, three, and four, the total would be eight, which is still not seven. Therefore, if she collected two, the total would be seven, which matches the total amount of nuts. So the answer would be B, two nuts. Number 21 states, Tim and Tom built a sandcastle and decorated it with a flag. They stuck half of the flagpole into the highest point of the castle. The upper tip of the flagpole was 80 centimeters above the ground, and the lower tip was 20 centimeters above the ground. How tall was the sandcastle? Okay, so first of all, we have this total being 80. So if this total is 80, then that means that the height of the flag is 60. Since half of the flag is being stuck in the sandcastle, then that means half of the flag is 30 centimeters. So, adding 20 and 30, you get the answer of 50 centimeters, which is C. So next up we have problem number 22, which states, here's nine squares. First, Ani replaced all the black squares with white ones. Next, Bob replaced all the gray squares with black ones. And finally, Chris replaced all the white squares with gray ones. What did they get at the end? So in order to solve this, I would recommend you first write out this diagram into letters with B representing black, W representing white, and G representing gray, and you would get this. So, now we have black, white, gray, white, gray, black, white, black, gray. So, we want to start off by replacing all the black squares with white ones. So, we would, we would erase the letter B, all, all letter Bs, and replace them with Ws. Next, it says that Bob replaced all the gray squares with black ones. So we take away all the letter G's and replace them with B's. And the final step is Chris replaced all the white squares with gray ones. So we erase all the white squares or all the W's and replace them with G's.
So in the end, you can just translate this back into colors, or you can just use it to go off, and if you compare it to all possible solutions, your answer would be D. So problem number 23 states, Peter chose a square of four cells in the table so that the sum of the four numbers inside the square is greater than 63. Which of the following numbers must be in the chosen square? So, um, through this method, you need to find the, the groups of cells that do, or that do add up to 63 or greater, which would only be this group of numbers and this group of numbers. Now notice how I drew like a Venn diagram because these two numbers in the center are the numbers that are in common because it is these two um, groups of cells are the only are the only groups of cells that have a sum that is greater than sixty three. So since there there's no option for nineteen, then the answer must be fourteen, which is letter A. Okay, so this is problem number 24, which is the last problem. And problem number 24 says, Amalia's machine changes one red token into three white tokens, and one white token into two red tokens. Amalia has three red tokens and one white token. She uses the machine only three times. What is the smallest number of tokens she can end up with? Okay, so in one of our cases, with a red token, a red token can be broken up into three white tokens. And then a white token can be broken up into two red tokens. Now in this case, we have one token going to three tokens, and then one token going to two tokens in this case. But we want to use this equation more often. So this will help us in determining what we're going to do first. So we have our three red tokens and our one white token. So we want to get the least amount possible, so we first start off with the white token and distribute this into two red tokens. Now that this white token has become two red tokens, we only have five red tokens, so it wouldn't really matter which one you, di you distributed into three white tokens. So we could just take this one for instance, and then that means you have so far one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tokens, and then for the final part you still need to um, distribute it one more time, and you want to get the least number possible, so you do where you distribute the white into two reds, which means that there's another one eliminated. So you've already you use the machine three times now, so you end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tokens. And you may be wondering why we didn't start off by using a red token or by distributing a red token. It's because we want the least number possible, and we want to use this equation as few times as possible. So we start off with the white token. So with this answer, you can circle C. Don't forget to subscribe and like. If you have any questions, you can email info at agoramagical.org or comment below and we'll reply back. Maybe. And if you want to see practice things or anything about us, you can visit our website, which is basically the end of the email but without the info and the end. So bye!